Rico called me and sent a message to myself and Joe Spindler. Guys, I've been invited to join the T100 tour. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this is a massive opportunity not to be missed and we had to grab this opportunity because the top 20 guys, the best guys, the top 20 girls in the world that can compete in a series of eight events uh, from three events in the US, in Europe, in the Middle East, the T100 Tour really starts to look like the Formula One of triathlon. There was the opportunity to raise the G100 US and yeah, it's a big opportunity and that's what I want to, to go the next level, to, to be in the, in the best level uh, of racing and always competing against the best, best athletes and that's why I really appreciate it to be in the uh, series. We just had the entire season planned out, some of the flights were already booked and then you have to throw everything upside down. So. What we went through in the last four weeks to prepare for this race was tremendous. And I can say we're very proud of how Rico handled it, but also the team around Rico and the crew cycle team did a fabulous job. I got the invitation for the whole series in the start of February. So very late, we, we hope for the season, T100 series, but we, we made a shuttle because I got no invitation in January for the, maybe then this year not, and we, we made a travel with 70.3 races, and then we completely reshelled the plan, and yeah, I normally wanted to start in May. In just four weeks time, and that's that basically shows that the people, the team, and the processes that we put in place were really working and under really high pressure and get us prepared for the first race of the season in Miami with Rico. Three, two, one. Come on. Was wir genau Let him go. 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 the left hand, the 180. Und dann die, also die eine kommen kann man nicht immer auf die Gefahr vielleicht. Weil also, das, das Ding ist dann ja auch, wir hatten in dem Fall sogar Rückenwind in die, also Richtung in die, also, also um, genau umgekehrt. Having a chat with him is always great and he gives me a little bit of tips because yeah, he raced in Clash Miami for three years uh, with the corner wing. That is, it's, it's more safe uh, to, to go in the, on the brakes and yeah, make it smaller than and always trying to, to be in aero position. Uh, you don't lose that much if you go short time in the brakes. Okay, have a chat with him is always nice because yeah, he, he is my role model and was it over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, so yeah, I'm always looking uh, to him and uh, yeah. We, we talk here? Yes, yes, if you're right up, uh, right up close. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm getting older. <laughs> Our next guest of the youngest Ironman 70.3 champion in history, Mr. Rico Bogan. How are you doing, Rico? I work great to be here. I'm, I'm very good here. Yeah. First time in the US. <laughs> it's your first time in the US? Yeah, it's my first time. Very fun. And, and you got into, uh, how old were you when you got into the sport? Uh, yeah, first I was a swimmer, so I started with six years. Yeah. So how many of these will you, for in terms of the uh, T100, how many do you think you'll do? 
Yeah, so I, I got a contract as a hotshot athlete, so I'll do, I think, seven, so I will leave out the next race in Singapore. Uh, but the other ways, I think I will do all of them, yeah. How was this winter for you after winning 70.3 Worlds? Was it more sponsored? I mean, you've got a lot of sponsors on here now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it, it went better with the sponsors. And yes, after the win, it was a little bit busy. Yes. Uh, because media appointments and yeah, sponsor appointments. But yeah, we got it uh, Yeah, over the time, yeah. We, we found good sponsors, uh, which, yes, we are happy, did. which we are happy with, yeah. In the subsequent two or three weeks, Rico and myself negotiated partnership contracts with all these sponsors, corporate sponsors, industry sponsors, and they are very, very important partners for Rico to be able to live as a professional athlete, to cover his expenses, to travel. Rico really is a special case, young, the youngest ever Ironman 70.3 world champion. It's only fair to say that we had to push ourselves quickly and go through the contract negotiation, work with all the partners, explaining them what value they were creating for, for Rico and what Rico and the team around Rico could also return to the sponsors. One of my biggest sponsors for this year is uh, Sokuni. Uh, yeah, I'm really grateful uh, that I'm getting this because, yeah, uh, even before this year, I was running in, in the shoes for, and I would say, yeah, two years I'm running these shoes and I, I think it, it's, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so the decision about the wetsuit uh, took a long time because yeah, first I, I tested all the wetsuits and, and the pool. Okay, Rico, maybe you can give us a quick insight which wetsuits we are testing today. Yeah, uh, we have the board, Yacht 3.0, 3.0. So just for me, you know, uh, swimming 400 meters and teeling, and there was they are quite the same at all. Um, uh, the ball was a little bit better already and then we went uh, to, uh, to Halle and there is a swim plume and yeah, there I tested with my coach Joe, uh, all the mat suits against each other and there we swim all, all times, three times, five minutes uh, with different phases and after each rep uh, we did the foul uh, master on, on my mouth and then yeah, measured the oxygen and so you can see how ex uh, exhausting the last uh, rep was and so yeah in the end the final uh, decision was with the board because they were the fastest and and yeah they were one to two, two seconds faster per, per 100 meters so very good and uh, good results and so I'm really uh, proud to be part of the board now and yeah, really happy. That means partners of athletes and sponsors yeah. Need to make that step up as well. Perfect. Okay, all good. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye bye. B bye. So that was PTO Media Department. Um, they asked, depending on how uh, Rico's performance is tomorrow during the race, if we can be available to talk a little bit about Rico during the live coverage. 
and about the bike and uh, so that's great. We're taking people right into the heart of triathlon. We felt as a bike company we have to go along with what the PTO is doing and take the sport of triathlon to the next level. And in less than three weeks, we built an entire new bike for Rico. We named it in a playful way. The TF1 is the Coos flagship bike. And we kind of like with the wing to the T100, we call it the TF100. So we didn't really doubt and thought about it too long. We had to come up with a new bike, a new bike design, but also to respect all these sponsors and create a massive opportunity of brand exposure. Matthias Garcia, our creative director, designed an amazing paint scheme. So the beginning of March, uh, so in three weeks we, we completely uh, designed a new bike. Uh, yeah, also with all the sponsors on the bike, uh, we want to step to the next step with Formula One because the highest league and Formula One drivers also have the sponsors on the car. So we want to, to make this happen and, and yeah, I think this is a special thing about Q. Uh, no, no other brand has, has the sponsors on the bike. So yeah, it's also giving Q gives me the opportunity for the other sponsors uh, to present and it's, that's really great. Testing and tuning the position is extremely important. A bike that is not measured and fit to the rider's body and that there's a perfect fit between body and machine can really cost the athlete comfort, create discomfort or cost speed. And we know that Rico, as a defending Ironman 70.3 world champion, he's testing every piece of product. Rico is extremely data driven. If you don't have the fastest technology, if you don't have the data and the numbers to prove that what you think is what, what the combination is supposed to do, then you're in a guessing game and you operate in a top 20 level of athletes. Any guessing game, you leave things unchecked, unmeasured, you don't have the data that tells you the true story, you're gonna lose. Where, where you are, yeah. this was straight. For your sensation, yeah. it was not straight. Yeah. <laughs> The bike was ready and on the 3rd of March, Rico took the train from Leipzig to Amsterdam and we tested the bike in an aero test in the velodrome in Alkmaar in the north of Holland. Feeling good? Yeah. Rico was tested on the bike, he was tuned, he got a new cockpit, he had all the latest uh, tools and components from ceramic speed, wheels, and so all of that was tested. The bike, the bike was packed up and the next day Rico flew out on the 5th of uh, March from Amsterdam to Miami and myself I followed one day later together with Matthias Garcia and Gaston Garde. We had a media team built around Rico with three guys experienced and a, and a mechanic, uh, Yuki, that uh, gave Rico a very special feeling because he was now operating among the top 20 guys. Yeah, so we designed the whole bike and then did the aero tests and also two uh, uh, frames from just for me. Uh, yeah, so it was really uh, cool that uh, all done in three weeks and yeah we're still tuning but uh, in this time it was crazy and really great.
So now it's 9th of March. It's race day. In the morning, we picked up Rico in the hotel at 10.30. The race start was 1.15. And Rico plans all the last three, four hours from the race time all the way back to the morning to his breakfast, to his little warm-up run, to having the team pick him up, bring him to the race, distribute the transition bags. It's hectic and there's a lot going on. Um, yeah, we have ministry for the bike and then some, well, six bottles for the one because there's seven left. Yeah. And then here, yeah, goodie brand of Omeos. Um, so everything prepared and some ice packs because it's getting very hot. 39 degrees and 70 percent of humidity. So yeah, it's getting difficult. But, yeah, we are prepared. Yeah, I was before the race was okay. I started in the middle of the day. So I could have uh, done an easy jog in the morning, had good breakfast and then going to the race track, uh, was everything fine. Um, at about 12.30, there's an athlete room where all the 20 athletes, the gladiators, all come together and they have their final little prep um, before they're brought out to the swim start. And it was an incredible, feeling just to see all these world-class athletes, the names of, a, of Alistair Brownlee, of Sam Long from the US, uh, Matisse Bargereux, so many amazing names, I can't mention all of them, there were two Dutch guys. Uh, you suddenly feel you have 20 drivers on the grid, on a Formula One race, and guess what? One of these athletes is riding a coup TF1 or specifically here, a coup TF1 100. As the founder, co-founder and CEO of a bike company, what an incredible feeling that is. On the grid, brands that have been there for 50, 60, 70 years, Mercedes, Ford, Ferrari, all of these brands, and then if we take it back to the bike companies, Cervelo, Trek, uh, Kenyon, we respect those brands tremendously. They're big brands. We are a little three-year-old baby, but one of these 20 guys, Rico Bogan, was riding a Coup TF1. Rico Bogan, wearing bib number 15 from Great Britain. Wearing bib number 12, racing from France, Clement Mignon. On your mark. And there they go, the swim dock pushes back as the men push off. Here at the inaugural race of the Miami T100, part of the T100 World Series, we are underway. I started from the left side of the pontoon and uh, next to Ben Canute and uh, yeah, Sam Leto was this lot behind me, uh, next to me. And yeah, he started very fast, Sam Laidlaw, with <laughs> a fast 200 meters, I would say. But yeah, uh, I could go behind his uh, feet as well, it's very good. And yeah, then I swam uh, at the second position. And Aaron Royal passed me from the side, and yeah, he wants to have the second position. But okay, then I was in the third position. Uh, yeah, and then behind the both, it was yeah, quite comfortable. Uh, the swim part and you know, was an Aussie exit. Yeah, I slipped away a little bit. There yeah, was a little gap, but not, nothing too bad. And uh, yeah, and in the second uh, loop, I, I was in the second position behind Aaron Royal. Um, yeah, and then after the last boy, I could take over the lead and, and yeah, did some faster uh, tempo. So maybe I could switch, uh, break the little gap. And Rico Bogan saying, hey, I want to take over this race. A little strong sprint here at the end of the swim. The racetrack temp is 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've got Rico Bogan coming out of the water first. Uh, Aaron Royals there with him, Sam Laidlow. Rico Bogan really strung that out late. Alistair Brownlee was out fourth there. I could go out of the water in the first position 
that was good. <laughs> yeah, gave me a little bit confidence uh, and yeah, then fast transition. And yeah, so on the bike I had a, a, a small gap, maybe 20 seconds. I settled my pace, uh, I think after one or two loops, uh, Matis Magia passed me. Uh, yeah, he is always a strong biker at the beginning of the bike. He pushes many watts, yeah, that's crazy. And yeah, after I think 20 kilometers, uh, seven late look came. Yeah, he passed me, and with him I could stay. It was better because yeah, I was a little bit uh, strong in the, in the curves. Yeah, on the on the 280 push, all the good watts. But this was possible. But then Magnus Dittler came, and then it was. <laughs> Tougher again. Take a look right now. There's Rico Bogan, who's currently in the fifth position, the 23 year old. We've got Alex Bock here, Rico's manager, like you just said. Thank you for joining us. And especially because Rico just came flying past and was shouting at you. What was he shouting? What did he want from you? Yeah, Rico's kind of like wants to have some times. So you can see he's not leading, so he knows he's following a couple of guys. And then he wants to know, where am I? Fourth, fifth, 30 seconds, 40 seconds up. So it, it's, it's game time now. In terms of where he is currently though, fifth, it's simply his PTO, his T100 debut. Pretty happy with how he's getting on so far? We're, we're deliriously happy. I mean, three weeks ago, he was not supposed to be here. He wasn't really ready in the top 20. He's uh, the youngest world champion, won it in the fastest uh, time ever. So the fact that PTO threw the roll down, actually invited him, uh, is an opportunity he could not miss. Well, Rachel, this sort of temperature coming from Germany is still a bit hot for him. We're going to skip Singapore, and then we're going to go pretty much to all the other events, uh, do, do the complete tour, and then finish with the 70.3 World Championship in Taupo to see if he can defend his title. Talk to me as well about his bike. It looks special. I know it's kind of a, something you've been working on. Give us an insight into what that's like to ride. Uh, basically, my partner has been 12 years in Formula One. And there's a great link that I see what the PTO is doing with the T100. You see the whole series, the races, the points, the TV. It's all kind of like, it's, it smells like a Formula One source. And that's what we've put actually in the bike. So the bike has got Razor sharp, new technology, patented. The front of the bike is really fast. We don't have stock. We build one bike for one person, and we use bike fitters in the process. So yeah, we we kind of like think he has a bit of a slight advantage over everybody else. But you know, you, you got to be fair. There's a lot of great bike brands out there. Well, I love that insight, Alex. Thank you. You better go because he wants timings. Thank you so much for your time. And um, yeah, so I I just hold hold the for yeah two laps. And then, yeah, I was completely at my own uh, thing after uh, 40 kilometers to 80, I was completely at my own. And now, finish off with a quarter of riders, that is Matisse Magier. Up, 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 up. And then I came off the bike in fifth position, uh, with two minutes gap to the leaders. So not that big, it's it's okay. So because the other swung is in the, in the field, so yeah. Driving with Magnus and Sam was cool, <laughs> at least for three rounds. So yeah, but just for the next next uh, race, we have also to improve the bike uh, bike part that I could hold it for longer. Maybe also some adjustments on the bike position. Yeah, we have to go in the aero lab uh, velodrome again because yeah, I had a little bit of back pain. So those are the steps for, for the next race. And then, yeah, uh, beginning of the run, I had uh, side stitches, and so I couldn't go out in full pace. And then it, it got uh, really hard, and the sun was burning down on the asphalt. Yeah, I think on the uh, tar market was. Yeah, 37 degrees because yeah, no shadows and, and one part it was just sun. And then the humidity, humidity it was 75 percent to 80, so very, very tough conditions.
very tough conditions. Uh, so I prepared the hot temperatures in Namibia and Lanzarote, but also not that hot. We, we expected a race with 24 degrees. Uh, and so now over 30 degrees, it was one of the hottest races, or well, it was the hottest race I ever had. It was a good, good learning now and good preparation, good heat pre uh, preparation. I, I have to learn this more hot and humidity um, for the next races, but this race will help me also in the future. And uh, in the end, it was not a top 10, but yeah, we are was aiming for the top 10, uh, but it was the first race of the season. so. I think we can improve from here. There he is. Awesome day in the office. Tough day in the office. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> I, I, I watch your videos all the time. Yeah. 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 I guess he likes to watch the young ones. Yeah. <laughs> How many hours are we to practice? 20 to 25. And any recommendation for a young one, 8 years old? 8 years. Yeah, have fun and keep going and yeah, I'd enjoy it and yeah, yeah make competitions, competition you learn the most, yeah. Oh yeah, thanks yeah. man. Oh yeah. Thank you. Good luck on the season. Okay. Thank you. For kids I um, try and give them some tips or say that they just uh, have to enjoy the sport and uh, uh, going and uh, there are also bad days uh, where there's very uh, tough for them, but but yeah, you have to love the sport and and enjoy it, and then then you're always uh, getting better because yeah, try it on as a sport. Uh, uh, what training? Uh, who trains good uh, is good in racing. You can yeah, if you don't have a good shape, you can yeah, over four hours you can't can't hide it. <laughs> my my goal is to step in the uh, food of Jan or trying to, to be uh, as good as he uh, is and also uh, yeah giving something back to the sport yeah, inspirate many people many many children uh, that they will do the sport yeah this, this will, will be my goal for the next years uh, that many children coming and say yeah Rico Bogen is doing the sport I want to do it too uh, this would be great if I could give this this back yeah. Hey, nice job. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We have a t-shirt, my girlfriend and dad wants a t-shirt from you. Congrats, man. I mean, it's worn. Yeah, it's worn. It's yeah. a medium, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> like, I'll just give it to you. Yeah. Are you going to come to the States at all in training? Yeah, I don't know. It's the first time here. Okay. Yeah. We might have to rethink the heat, the heat camps. Yeah. Yeah. Is Arizona yeah, hot? No. Well, uh, very hot. Yeah, yeah, dry, not not dry the hot, dry right? hot. Yeah. It's not like yeah. Phuket or yeah. tropical hot. Yeah, this time of year it's not that hot because it's winter. It's like 25 maybe, but the summers are. And actually we get monsoon, so yeah. we get in the summer we get rain. Oh, so yeah. you get like 35, and then 40, yeah. and 60% humidity. It's yeah, that's un, good. It, it, yeah. That's what you need. Like in 2000, I do. It's only like 600 meters. Okay. You can go up to 2000 okay. if you want, but not where I'm at. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, chat, we'll catch up more. Yeah. Hey, cheers. It was a really tough race day for him. The heat, the change of race planning, the accommodating to and getting used to the new bike. We're grateful for Rico's performance. I'm super grateful for the team because this is an entire infrastructure that ultimately supports one athlete. And this athlete's performance is everything because with race results, that trumps everything. But an athlete winning a, winning a race or an athlete doing really well and being able to race his, his performance, we cannot all win on race day. There's 20 guys and one can win. And we sort of like had a top 10 target in mind was that ambitious or not? We don't know. This is new territory. Although in Lati, Rico already has competed with some of these guys. He came out on top, but this was the beginning of the season. And now I'm in the Formula One. Last year was more Formula Two racing, so I would exclude the uh, uh, World Champs. This was also high level, but uh, there I was on my high speed point. Uh, but, but yeah, you can see, yeah. <laughs> It's the next level, and yeah, uh, Magnus Dietlev and them late low, yeah, they're really strong on the bike, and also Matis and Alyssa Browning are pushing at the beginning very high watts. It's fair to say that halfway the bike, we could see 
that Rico was really struggling with his core temperature and the really high wattage because the guys in front were pushing 360 to 420 watts. That's incredible numbers. And once you see you're pushing and you're going along with them and now you're really racing, you have to be careful. You don't blow up the engine because five, six guys DNF, they did not finish. And Rico was determined to finish his first race. Also we measured lots of data so with the core temperature. Uh, my peak heat temperature is not anymore that high. So that I yeah can stay long in the heat. I think the humidity was the new thing because yeah in Europe we don't have that high humidity. I, I'm in Leipzig and yeah the whole December uh, so after the World Champs and in, in my off season I was completely in, in Germany and cold winter. Then yeah we did a Namibia training camp. There was around 30 degrees but very uh, dry so like. 10 to 20 uh, humidity, this was very low. Yeah, if we going more on the hot train camps, uh, and then my body is adapting over the years and over the time. Uh, so this is a new learning, uh, trying to prepare also the humidity and the heat. Aerodynamics-wise, we, we will do uh, another uh, um, bike test, uh, aero testing, and yeah, the younger than the bike part especially is, is one which is coming with the years and with the training hours. So we adjust my dry suit and yeah, uh, then can also adjust uh, bike position. Um, so that we are, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more easier to, to be there. And yeah, the heat, heat preparation is still going on, yeah. Plenty of gross, but when you wash it, it'll be good. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Yeah. I mean, huge congrats on world champ. That's yeah, amazing, that's, you know? That's good, yeah. Good, good, good learnings from yesterday. Yeah. yeah. You, I have to you, set that up. You're either winner, you learn. Listen, yeah. you, get, you gave a few good inputs, yeah. so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, cheers. You guys all yeah. around yeah. all year. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah. Okay. San Francisco, we are. Okay. i will definitely in Vegas yeah. as well. Okay. We're yeah. going to do all the U.S. ones. Sweet. Yeah, Somewhere we should book it again with the yeah. Enjoy. yeah, let's do it. We yeah. can't do the private jet yet. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> maybe, not yet. maybe you can do it. Yeah, no, not me. <laughs> not me either. Yeah. I got a baby to feed. Yeah. Hey, cheers okay. to the guys. I had a two hour phone call with Joe Spindler, Rico's coach. We came together as a team. We got data. We got temperature data, power data. Uh, we had wattage data. Which, this is massive. And we believe that data and the numbers give you stories, but you need to analyze it. So we had a great two hour debrief. I think it gave Joe and Rico phenomenal input. It's now to them to plan the next two months. We're very proud of his results. Was this the end game or the result we had really in mind? No, maybe not. But we took a lot of learnings out of this race. And as I sometimes jokingly share with many athletes, every experience, good or bad, is a great opportunity to learn and to grow. So I'm not at the highest level, not at, not at the lofty level where I won the World Champs, but you can say I'm better than last year in March, so this is, this is good. And now I have a block in the altitude again. Uh, and then in April, you can yeah, tune the bike and then stay longer on the bike position and then June is the next T100 race in San Francisco, so I will leave out the Singapore race to prepare more and then I will be better.